This Black History Month, we're diving into the story of North Carolina's Soul City. It's a black-led utopia built in the wake of civil rights movement on a dream of equality and opportunity. But as Tom George shows us right now, that dream is now mostly a ghost town in Warren County, but its legacy and its lessons are still very much alive. On a plot of land down a dirt road in Warren County, an unsuspecting final resting place. Took a lot of courage at that era and conviction. For a larger than life figure. He was a crazy man, you know, he did, he did things other people don't do, that did do, uh, you know. He's the first black person to sue and go to the University of North Carolina Chapel Hill in 1951. After years fighting for racial justice, by the late 60s, Floyd McKissick had his biggest and craziest idea yet, a brand new town built from the ground up on a dream of economic opportunity called Soul City. Certainly everybody could live here, but with the black power influence of my dad from the civil rights movement, of course, the concept of making sure black folk had their piece of the pie. In 1969, after securing loans and land, they got to work. Charmaine McKissick was a teenager when the family moved in. So we were all kind of like, oh God, is this it? Is At its peak, Soul City spanned thousands of acres. The brochures painting a picture of a thriving town, an industrial park called Soul Tech, employing more than 200 people, a fire station, a public swimming pool, and a health care center. They also brought in future Charlotte Mayor Harvey Gant, who looked at another new town a few hundred miles north in Columbia, Maryland, as a roadmap. In some sense, Soul City swam against the economic tide in the area, whereas Columbia just swam with it. Unlike Soul City, Columbia was able to withstand the economy of the 70s. There, they were backed by a white developer and surrounded by a booming D.C. metro with an already strong black middle class. Meanwhile, back in Soul City, a black-led project in those days was still very much an uphill battle, especially in the South. Even the name turned some people off. When he said the word soul, he meant agape soul, like in the Bible, you know, love, love for your fellow man, love in the world, not... James Brown say it loud, I'm black and I'm proud. Things began to go downhill after a series of negative press claiming financial improprieties. Audits of the town found no wrongdoing, but the damage was done. HUD pulled the funding in 1979. Basically, this came in one afternoon and said there's no more money. Now the Soul City monolith still stands, but Soul City never became what it was once supposed to be. The building housing Soul Tech, now part of the state prison system. Honestly, the first time I drove by and saw the Bob wire, I tried. Their rural health care clinic, the only one for miles, stayed even a few decades later, but eventually that shut down too, now covered in trees and vines. But Soul City's roots are still there. The firehouse, the pool, the regional water system, the roads, the infrastructure wouldn't be there without Soul City. Even now, in 2024, Warren County and its officials have designated this space as the place for economic development. And maybe one day, it'll inspire someone else to think big someone with courage and conviction and a lot of soul. He believed so strongly in the dream of what he was trying to create that we all stayed for as long as we could because we believed in Floyd. And Charmaine McKissick Melton still very much believes in that dream. She still lives right there in Soul City in her father's house. She says she's encouraged recently to see new homes popping up. And she also was able to secure a grant hoping to convert a historic house there into the McKissick Soul City Civil Rights Center to keep that legacy alive. Mm. We know Charmaine uh, as her work as a professor at MC Central University as well. I understand she's now retired, but uh, still uh, trying to keep her, her dad's legacy alive there. And part two of our reporting continues tomorrow. Our race and culture reporter Akila Davis will be going to Soul City to really talk about the future. Mm -hmm. uh, we're looking forward to that. So much hope and promise yeah. there, Tom yes, Dorsch. Absolutely. And uh, it's just so fascinating talking to her and a history mm -hmm. that a lot of people don't know about too. So Yeah, I had no idea. Thank yeah. you. Tom, thank you.